You will walk, oh. You will walk. But what is this you are wearing? Go outside. The faculty can be at science now. You are receiving lecture at education. And some lectures may not give you tests. And it is your assignment that is your test. Hi everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time seeing this face, hi, I am Mariam Awesu. I study law at the University of Lagos. On this channel, I share my experience as a student in Unilag. I also give insights into my life through my beautiful vlogs and I share study tips and acts that make my student life bearable. If this is something that interests you, please do not forget to click the subscribe button, like this video and comment down below what you love about this video. From the title of this video, we already know what I'm going to be talking about. I am here to share things you should expect as a newly admitted student of University of Lagos. I am here to share guidance on how to navigate through your first few days or first few weeks or months as a newly admitted student in University of Lagos. And I am sharing this video because in my first year, I realized that I didn't really have anybody to actually guide me or there was literally no video like this on YouTube to guide me on how to do well or even navigate through life as a new student in ELAG, as a fresher or level student in ELAG. So this is why I am making this video to guide you so you make any make any mistakes or maybe to reduce or maybe maintain the expectations you have of University of Lagos. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. The very first thing I would like you to know and to expect is that you have orientation. Typically, orientation happens during the first week, but I think it is not the case for University of Lagos. So what is orientation? Orientation is a chance for new students to learn how things work in their new school and meet other students as well as faculty and staff. So how does orientation work in ELAG? Orientation in ELAG is a week-long program with series of events, agenda programs organized by the university. So what happens during that period? You have something called campus tour where there will be like tour guide. I think lecturers and some other students will actually take you around the university, walk you around the university, showing you the several facilities that we have on campus. Also, your faculty would also organize a program for you where your dean as well as his subordinates will meet you and address you alongside the faculty escorts. Faculty and schools will actually talk to you this period. There will be a particular time that will be fixed for you by your faculty during that orientation week. Everything happens during that week. It happens from Monday to Friday, basically. Um, faculty clubs and associations will not be left out. These people will come to you to talk to you about and try to cajole you to join in their own club and give you reasons why you should join their club or association. So that's basically things that happen. Also, your faculty religious body, a religious body, you also have like a religious body in every faculty. These people will also talk to you. They will organize program a particular day. They will pick a day, mostly on Wednesdays. Like in my faculty, faculty of law, we have NAMLAS. On Wednesday, NAMLAS usually have um, faculty forum where they would meet. We usually have like weekly or bi-weekly meetings in faculty of law for Muslim law students. So we would also, they will also organize program like orientation program for faculty of law new uh, freshers something like that you get so the amir and amiral and other schools namlas schools will actually talk to you so in other faculties too i'm very sure that you also have muslim bodies within your faculty so these people will also talk to you that week lastly i would like to mention that the religious body in university of lagos as a whole would also organize programs for you. That period, you will be seeing a lot of flyers. You'll be so overwhelmed, I am very sure of that. But you'll be seeing a lot of flyers, 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 flyers flying around <laughs> for you as a fresher to like attend the program for them to talk to you. And what will you be doing? It's just basically advice left, right, and center. Be prepared to listen to advice. And I know it will be very overwhelming, but trust me, in the long run, you would appreciate having these people talking to you. Do you understand? It can be very tiring, but prepare your mind that you would, these are things you will experience and you would definitely need them going forward in the University of Lagos. I need to also mention that you'll be spending most of your time at the multi purpose hall 
very close to the sports center after faculty of education from coming from the university of lagos gate is by the by the right so it's in between sports center and education so that's the place we spend most of your time for the orientation week so prepare your mind for advice advice and a lot of working you will work you will work but please don't work just take up to wherever you are going that's it the second thing i would like to mention is that for you to expect is that you would undergo something called medical screening medical screening is a requirement a compulsory requirement for every new student to undergo as a matter of fact if you do not undergo the process you will literally not graduate it is a prerequisite just have it at the back of your mind it is very important for you to undergo a medical screening and why is it necessary? It is to enable the university to have baseline health information of every student and also to ensure that new students do not pose any kind of health risk to other students on campus. As a matter of fact, there is something called toxicology test that many newly admitted students will have to go through. I think that one is to test for drugs. As of 2018, I did not do that it was introduced in 2019 so these are a series of tests there are a series of tests within the medical screen that you go through so let me explain the process the process is quite really long and it is tedious you can't complete the screening process in one day you have to keep going back and forth to complete till you complete the process so what you have to do is that once you resume i think second or third week of resumption just go to the medical center it is immediately after the staff school and um, women's society school it is around that side just go there walk to the reception and tell them that oh yeah you're a new student and you want to undergo the you want to start your medicals just tell them something like that. so i think they will give you a folder then you have a lot of a long list of processes series of tests to um, conduct so one of the tests you have to conduct is that you would have to go for blood tests to know your genotype your blood group they will test for a lot of things and that we cannot do that in one day <laughs> just by your mind as a matter of when you get to the lab when you submit they will give you a date and the date can be like a week later because bear in mind you are not the only student that wants to do their medicals there are other newly admitted students like you that will want to go come for their medical so there will be a long list of you guys going for your medical so that's why they will give you like a date i am talking to you i've not completed my medical since 2018 because the process is really long it is very hard to actually complete because you have to juggle it with attending classes and going to the medic, uh, medical center to do the medicals it is very tedious it is really really hectic I'm, I'm telling you the truth so that's our advice that you go very early in the morning resume there that should be your first class go for your medicals do whatever you have to do when they give you like a new date make sure you go there i think when you're done with the blood test and everything you go for x-ray and x-ray that one to you that one is like an appointment based something you they'll give you an appointment then you have to go then i think for eye test you have to go to loot so you shall complete the entire process once you complete everything you have a card then automatically whenever you want to whenever you are sick and you want to go to the medical center just know that every medic medicine or medication that you receive you will get is for free because you are paid for it as part of your school fees you get good so the third expectation or third thing to expect as a newly admitted student of university of lagos is that is based on academics for academics you need to know that you would have to do something called co course registration course registration is done on the student portal so before you register any course i would advise that this is why you have to go for your orientation because you will be told you'll be provided a prospectus we have something called prospectus because inside it you have like the list of courses you need to take to complete your degree or your course to graduate do you understand so going for um orientation will also help you know the right courses you need to register for every year because there are some courses that you need to register in 100 level 200 level 300 like that like that till you graduate so once you know these courses go to your portal and register the courses for your 100 level and you are eligible to register for your courses register your courses once you pay your school fees 
ticket so once you are done registering the course make sure you attend classes you have lectures there will be lecturers that will lecture you they will teach you our lecturers do teach a lot i'm not gonna lie they teach really good in you know, like so make sure you go to class attend classes this is not secondary school that anybody's going to tell you will oh, break period there's nothing like that if you like 8 a.m to 5 p.m should be your break period no problem nobody's going to tell you so that's what i'm telling you on this channel attend classes you have a timetable timetable for your classes i think some of you have borrowed courses especially in under level we borrowed a lot of courses in under level so make sure you know the venue for the courses you will walk oh you will work because actually when it comes to borrow courses you will work your faculty can be at science now you are doing you are receiving lecture at education you will work if you don't want to work enter cab there's cab for you do you understand so attend classes there will be lectures you will be giving i think there will be textbooks yes you have to buy the textbooks yourself yourselves one thing you need to know about lectures is that a whole semester takes up to 20 to 21 weeks and lectures occur for 16 weeks that is approximately four months so 16 weeks of lectures one week of lecture free and i think four weeks of exams let me explain 16 weeks of lecture i think by the eighth week we usually have something called tests some other school they call it mid-term exam or something like that but it is called test and bear in mind that your lecturers can decide to give you a test by third week of resumption. Don't go and be waiting till eighth week. And some lecturers can decide to give you tests a week to exam. It depends on what happens. And some lecturers may not give you tests, and it is your assignment that is your test. So just bear your mind that most of these things may not work the way it is structured. It is university, it's not secondary school. So prepare your mind. So after 16 weeks of lecture, we have something called lecture free. Lecture free week is basically nobody's going to give you lecture, you're not going to receive any lecture, you're not writing any tests, you're not doing anything. However, if you are doing GST, if you are registering GST, as a matter of fact, under level students would have to do GST. Let me explain. So that week you will do your GST. So let me explain what GST is all about. GST is a compulsory course that does not add to your GP, but you need to pass it to graduate. Let me explain. If you have six courses and you have GST as your seventh course, it is only the six courses that you write your exams and tests for that would add to your GPA. GST is not added to your GPA. It's just a two-unit course. It's not added to your GPA. So the seventh course, but you need to pass it to graduate. If you don't pass it, you're not graduating. So imagine you not graduating because it's not passed GST. And throughout your stay in your life, you have five GSTs. That we do i don't know how it is structured i've forgotten because i've completed mine so those people that have completed their gsts would have that week as their lecture free where they're not doing anything they're not attending classes that basically just reading for exams but you as another level student you have gst that week so it's just like a day or two exam and as a matter of fact gst also has tests you will do two tests and one exam you get and the way GST is, if you like get 90 over 100, nobody's giving you a it's TP. That's how it is. So when you're done with your GST, we have exam week. So exam week, so, um, it hardly happens for four weeks, but it depends on how your 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 faculty structures your exams. Because your exam, you can have an exam today, one exam this week, and you have three next week, and you have one later so this based on how they space your exam it's not like secondary school that you have exam every single day it's like why the way why could just scatter your exam exactly that's how it is but i like to mention that the last two weeks of exam is usually done it's only education students that usually have their exam that period only education students that have borrowed courses from other faculties that would write exam with you during the first few weeks first two weeks of exam but the la usually last two weeks of exam is only education students that usually write exam that period Every other student will must have finished their exams, or very few students will be writing in other faculties will be writing the exam that period. Do you understand? So that is that about academic structure. Yes, I'd like to mention that we have a grading system of 5.0. So I think if you remember my last video, if you have not watched it, please click on it to watch it. My last super in last video. I mentioned that in Nilag, 
we have a 5.0 grade, um, grading system. Yes, yeah, so in here, like 0 to 39 is F, 40 to 45 is E, or 44 is E, 45 to 49 is D, 50 to 59 is C, then 60 to 69 is B, then 70 to 100 is A. And we usually have like different course units, like two units courses. There are, I think there are some more units courses, I don't know. But two units courses, three units courses, four units courses. That's basically how it is in like for academics if you enjoyed this video so far and if you like to see more of it please hit the subscribe button and like this video so youtube will push this video to more people that will be in need of this video the next thing you need to know about the university of lagos as a newly admitted student as a fresher is that is accommodation one important thing you need to know about accommodation is the balloting system this is not the usual system that is adopted during election. Rather, it is a process where the student with the fastest internet connection gets a best space. It is no longer news that the University of Lagos admits more students than they, than they can accommodate. As a matter of fact, we have 8,000 best spaces for over 30,000 undergraduates. So for the 8,000 best spaces to be unequally distributed, you need to go through the process called balloting. So balloting is not like you voting, like I said. It is just a process where you log into your student portal and you click on accommodation. So once you click on accommodation option, there will be a list of hostels for you depending on your gender. Then you click on the ones that you want and you get the hostel. That's it. But it's not that simple. Like I said, it is the student with the fastest internet connection that gets the best space. Also, a student with the highest number of tabs because you open tabs a lot. I'm very sure that freshers will not have their own balloting the same week Stellites do. I think yours will be like a week or two later. But bear in mind that you need serious internet. You can't do it on your phone. I would advise, strongly advise you to go to cyber cafe, use all the modems in this world because it is the survival of the fittest. To get best space, so minimum is two. The, I think the IS is like 12, 14. And that is to be like an extension room in hostels like Kofu, Ademola Hall. And I think that, that's the only place I know that they have like 12 to 14 people in a room. And note that all these two man room, eight man room, four man room I'm talking about, you have squatters that will stay in the, in the room. So a room meant for four people, you might have 10 people staying there. Yes, it's a jungle. Survival of the fittest. So prepare your mind. The next thing you need to know about Unilag is transportation, the transport system in Unilag. Originally, we have the cab and shuttle system. But well, now other system, bus systems have been introduced like carry buses and BRTs. This is, we all know that carry and BRT is owned by Lagos State Government. But we have cabs that work for school and shuttles that work for school. The shuttle, you already see it, University of Lagos Campus Shuttle, you see it. So the cab is, for, is within, it operates within school. It's from school gate to campus. There are some that you can hire or charter, but most of them actually operate like publicly, like they, they transport students from cab to wherever they are going. So formerly, cabs the fare was five, 15 era rather. Let's say 500 for bit. Was 15 era. Since fuel subsidy, they increased their fees to I think 100 era. But schools spoke to them to subsidize this to 17 era, but i remember that they mentioned that this new session they would review the prices but before we vacated last session it was 17 era 17 era but because of change some of us used to pay 100 and some if you have 150 for two people you pay because nobody will be looking for 20 era or 10 era change for you so just pay 100 and be going do you understand so shuttle operates from yaba to school and from bariga to school so and school to yaba like that vice versa so formerly it was 100 era as a matter of fact when i entered in when i entered 100 level in 2018 it was 17 era but now 100 era because of 13 era change it was not 100 era but since the fuel subsidy they increased it to 200 but i think by the time 
yes school spoke to them and they brought it down to 150 and again they i think they want to review the prices and it will probably be set to 200 but by that before we vacated it was 150 that we paid so the queue for that one is always very long it's early in the evening it's always very long if you are watching this my video if you have been on this channel if you have been a subscriber of this channel since i was in school you know how i used to stay on queue it's a struggle this is a struggle and i hope no student would ever stay outside school again like me it's a, it was a terrible experience so that's that about the cab and shuttle for carry bus you need a card again if you have been a subscriber of this channel you know i when i stayed at kwaku at yaba i had to get carry card for 400 naira, and that one you recharge any amount on it and you are using your card anyhow you like it so you just have to tap and you get a seat to sit so that's that then the BRT I've never tried BRT but I think BRT takes people to Yanokwaja I think Koshodi I don't know I've never tried BRT the three systems I use are cab shuttle and carry bus but the BRT I've never tried it so that is that about the transport system in school so the next thing is the campus facilities we have facilities like libraries laboratory the sports center for recreational and um, physical activities on campus so basically for libraries the libraries i use make use of are the main libraries we have a lot of libraries on campus so first i'd like to mention one i've never used it before but the, um, there's a library as education it's popularly known as education library so I, i've never entered it i've never used it and why haven't i used it because people say that it's not so conducive it is always congested and the heat in that place i heard can bake bread so i don't want to be uncomfortable when i'm studying i definitely want to be comfortable so that's why i don't use it there's another library there's engineering library i don't have any business with that i've never used it um anybody can use all these libraries i don't know about engineering library but education library any, anybody can use it once you're university of Lagos, you can use it there is akt library it is like underground that place too it's not so conducive it's always very hot especially during exam when people are using it it's very very hot so but you can go in with food that's why i like that place you can go in with food but main library main library has a lot of sections that you can make use of but you cannot eat in the main library you cannot take in water or food we have law library but that one is like for law students and it's underground it is in the main library underground so around the library side we also have um right beside the library there's an mtn library but i've never used it but people say it's a very conducive library you can stay there and you really like the place i've never tried it i hope to try it this new session poetry is i think at faculty of sciences there are laboratories around i'm not sure and i think engineering too they have laboratories but i'm not a lab science student so i don't make sure of labs so i don't know but i know that they are laboratories so for sports center that's where we have most of our games students that are studying hke human kinetic and health education yes they they use sports center we have a lot of facilities by ranging from basketball volleyball handball we have the the track yes we have the track we have other facilities there at the sports center it's an amazing place i think we have the gym as well so the next thing i would like to talk about is social life in school the social life in school has been dead since 2019 since covid happened social life in school died i think last se session revived the social life and usually we have events ranging from all weeks which happened during um at the second semester all week every all dimension for hostels they usually have like series of events during the week where we invite guests that's why you see some people saying oh i was having a lag all your celebrities say, oh i was having a lag yes for all week so we also have events like um which other ones we have oh my forgot you know because most of these things died down the last time i experienced most of these events were like 2019 this is the final one final important thing you need to know or expect is dress code generally in real life, we don't have a dress code just dress nicely that's why some people regard university of lagos as any house school because people don't really have 
dress code per se in school we just have like everybody just dresses anyhow do you get not anyhow but people dress the way they want no restriction or like in university of learning that i have to you know no restriction in your life but i am very sure that faculties like faculty of arts faculty of arts have a dress code as a matter of fact if you are going in and you just wear like singlet or this armless the security will turn you back they will turn you outside go outside what was if you are wearing go outside dress don't you have your parents go out they will embarrass you they will embarrass you they will tell you to go outside if you dress anyhow faculty of arts ask their students if you are a faculty of arts and you are watching this video don't dress anyhow there is a dress code for you people in faculty of arts faculty of law we also have dress code which is white and black <laughs> and that one our dean is saying that he wants to reinforce white and black this season this session so i know many law students that have been asking me questions during this semester white and black is compulsory i think we can wear black black i don't know if he wants to actually make it really really he wants to take it seriously but to be on the safe side please talk about white and black if you're a first year law student you only wear white and black when you have legal methods if you are having other board courses like psychology you don't need to wear white and black just wear your mufti and go or english or but it, once you have legal methods please dress the way you would appear in court generally in school we don't have dress code and we have come to the end of today's video i hope you really enjoyed this video and you're able to pick one or two things from this video and i hope this video has helped you prepare your mind on things you need to expect maybe you need to like bring down your expectations a little bit or maybe you should take it a little bit higher however you want it i hope this video has been helpful to you and i can only pray that you have an amazing stay at the university of lagos an amazing and prosperous stay a successful one at that at the university of lagos starting from october till whenever you graduate thank you so much for watching this video please before you click out do not forget to subscribe to my channel like this video comment what you love about this video let me know if you want to see more of this because definitely during this semester or session we are going to have back-to-back -back content and i hope you are ready i hope you are ready for the content coming so i will see you guys in my next video bye